Good evening. I want to welcome you to the May 17th, 2021 meeting of the Pacifica Planning Commission. Uh, before we move to the um, substance of the agenda, there are some preliminary um, uh, remarks I want to share regarding the way we'll be conducting this meeting. In particular, I want to note that this meeting will be conducted pursuant to the provisions of the Governor's Executive Order N2520 and N2920, which suspends certain which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act and pursuant to the orders of the Health Officer of San Mateo County. And as this meeting is necessary so that the city can conduct necessary business, it is permitted under the orders as an essential governmental function. Commissioners and city staff uh, essential to this meeting will be video teleconferencing into the meeting and there will be no physical location that's open to the public. The public, however, can observe the meeting while sheltering at home via the Zoom link as the primary means of participation or via the cable channel 26 or live stream broadcast as alternative methods of viewing the meeting. Participation via the Zoom link will enable the meeting to be observed live and will enable the public to speak during public comment periods. The Zoom link was published in the meeting agenda. <clears throat> live public comments are being accepted at this meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, in place of emailed public comments. Public comments may be provided live by members of the public utilizing the Zoom link uh, to participate in the meeting. Utilize the raise hand function in the Zoom application on a computer, a smartphone, or a tablet, or else enter star nine to raise your hand if you're dialing in by phone. Please ensure your name is correctly entered in your Zoom profile so city staff may properly identify you when it is your turn to speak. Those dialing in by phone will be called to speak by the last four digits of their phone number as shown in the Zoom interface. Okay. With that said, we'll go ahead and move to the uh, substance of the agenda and we'll start with a roll call, please. Commissioner Berman. Present. Commissioner Domareth. Present. Commissioner Ferguson. Present. Commissioner Godwin. Present. Commissioner Hauser. Present. Commissioner Leal. Present. Commissioner Nibla. Present. All commissioners are present. Thank you. We're going to move into um, the salute to the flag, and I'll ask uh, Commissioner Domarat to uh, lead us in the salute to the flag, please. Uh, I would prefer that somebody else do it because I'm sitting in the hospital right now, and I'm oh in a waiting goodness. room. So. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to go gonna ahead and, uh, I okay. have a procedure. I have a procedure tonight, but I'm uh, you know, a, a good citizen of Pacifica, so I will attend the meeting until they cut me off. But at that this is, point- uh, That is above and beyond, and I'll ask people <laughs> to, to stand as they're able, and only as they're able. And uh, I'll go ahead and, uh, and lead us. Um, okay, great, pledge thank you. allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God uh, indivisible. indivisible. With liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you, and uh, my apologies, Commissioner Dermarat, and uh, thank you for your participation today. Um, we're going to move then to um, administrative business, and we'll start with approval of the order of agenda. I'm going to uh, ask if there is a motion to approve the order of agenda. Uh, Commissioner Hauser. I'll make a motion to approve the order of the agenda. Thank you. So Commissioner Hauser's moved to approve the order of agenda. Do we have a, a second, Commissioner uh, uh, Berman? I second the motion. Great, we have a motion and second. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Berman. Yes. Commissioner Domerath. We'll come back. Commissioner Ferguson. Yes. Commissioner Godwin. Yes. Commissioner Hauser. Yes. Commissioner Leal. Yes. Commissioner Nibla. Yes. And Commissioner Domerath. Yes. That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. So we'll move to the next item on under administrative business and that's approval of the minutes for the meeting of April 5th, 2021. I'll ask my colleagues whether anybody has uh, comments or concerns about the minutes uh, and or whether uh, anyone wants to make a motion to approve them. Commissioner Hauser. I will make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. We have a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of April 5th, 2021. Commissioner Leal. I'll second that motion. Great, we have a motion and a second. Can we get a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Berman. Yes. Commissioner Domerat. Yes. Commissioner Ferguson. Yes. Commissioner Godwin. Yes. Commissioner Hauser. Yes. Commissioner Leal. Yes. Commissioner Nibbler. Yes. 
that motion passes unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> the next order under, I'm sorry, the next item under uh, administrative business is a designation of liaison to the city council meeting. Looks like it's the meeting of June 14th, 2021, where the lot three Harmony at one appeals will be considered. Is there anyone who wants to, uh, or is able to volunteer to serve as the uh, liaison to, to this meeting? Okay, well, I'm not seeing a, 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 a rush to the, uh, uh, a rush to, uh, to volunteer for this. Um, Mr. Murdoch, was this the matter that was considered the, um, the Monday that I, that I missed some weeks ago? It was considered on April 5th. I'd have to check uh, if that was a yeah. meeting that you were absent. I think I was absent for that meeting. So I, I'm, I probably don't have a, a perfect sense of kind of what the back and forth was, except from the minutes. Um, I'll just add that uh, we will, uh, under agenda item number two, also be asking for a planning commission representative or representatives to present the annual report at a study session uh, that same evening. And so uh, if there was someone planning to volunteer for that, perhaps they wouldn't mind taking on the extra duty. Okay, well, we could maybe put a tack in that and uh, you, perhaps we can take this up again at that time. That sounds good, thank you. Thank you, okay. Okay, that takes us then to uh, oral communications. And this is the portion of the agenda that's available to the public to address the planning commission on any issues within the subject matter jurisdiction of the commission that is not on the agenda, the regular agenda. The time allowed for any speaker will be three minutes. Uh, I see that we um, do have some attendees and I see at least one hand. So um, Mr. Murdoch, I'll ask you to, uh, to help us uh, work through oral communications here. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to set up the timer and then call the first speaker. All right, Cliff Lawrence, please go ahead. Cliff Lawrence, please go ahead. You're on mute currently. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes. Yep. Right, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Clifford Lawrence. I live in the West Fairmont district. And first, I want to thank you all on the commission for your service to our community. Um, you're probably asking yourself about this point. Uh, why am I here? Um, I appreciate succinctness, and I imagine that you do too. After a lot of soul searching today, uh, I decided this was my best approach. I'm here because it's not only my right to be here, it is my duty. If we're to cherish our democratic institutions, we should all be engaged now. This is not the time for anybody to sit out the dance. This evening, I ask you not to tolerate public engagement. I ask you to embrace it. I ask you to promote it at all occasions. It is my plan to engage and to return with questions, concerns, sometimes maybe even insights to assist you in your process as a volunteer graybeard. I thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Um, Mr. Murdoch, could we have the next speaker, please? The next speaker is Christine Bowles. Ms. Bowles, please go ahead. Um, good evening, commissioners. Um, just, just, uh, I just want to echo what Cliff said to, to start with. And um, again, thank you for your service. Um, uh, as you know, I, er, except for uh, Mr. Nibblin, who wasn't there, I, I spoke up against the Harmony One project on at the early April meeting. And at that time, I hadn't really had a chance to thoroughly look over the drawings. Um, and um, the, the appeal is actually based um, mostly on things that were not brought up in the meeting. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, there were major discrepancies in the drawings um, in terms of the lot coverage. The, the grading plan did not match uh, the floor plans or the, um, 
um, pay the hardscape or the landscape plans. Um, and uh, so, so after the meeting, I did some calculations and found that um, um, while the planning department said we were 130 square feet over the HPD allowed disturbance area, um, the actual disturbance was um, over 2000 square feet over what was allowed. Um, and there were also numerous um, conditions of approval that were ignored, misinterpreted, um, um, not followed through on properly. Um, so two appeals have been filed, um, um, one by myself and uh, Dinah Verby, who um, actually helped write a lot of the conditions and, and the original project approval in 2007, and the other by um, CPOP, the Coalition of Pacificans for an Updated Plan, and Rich Campbell, who was on the Planning Commission when that project got approved. So um, um, we, we are in negotiations right now with the project sponsor. They're um, willing to, to listen and make some modifications and we're trying to work through that, but I'm not sure we're gonna, uh, you know, I can't promise anything at this point. There's, there's still a lot to work through. But my, my ask for you is to please um, do your jobs a little bit more carefully to review projects that come to you and not necessarily um, rely on everything you read in the staff report. I, I know the staff tries to do the best they can, but um, you know maybe there's some issues with not having a building department here as part of our planning department anymore. I, I just feel like things are getting lost and um, many of you have the technical expertise um, that the planning department does not have. And so I just respectfully ask you to, to please review projects more carefully as they come before you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowles. Uh, Mr. Murdoch, do we have other speakers? Uh, no one else has a hand raised, Chair. Okay. Well, if we don't see any more hands in the next couple of seconds, then we'll go ahead and bring it back to uh, to the next item on the agenda. Okay. So we'll go ahead then and uh, close uh, oral communications and uh, I'll confirm that we do, do not have any consent items. Correct. Great, thank you. <clears throat> so then we'll move to uh, new public hearings. And the first um, item under new public hearings is the review of the 2021 to 2026 capital improvement program, uh, commonly referred to as the CIP for consistency with the general plan in the local coastal land use plan. The recommended CEQA action for this particular matter is that it is exempt under CEQA guidelines section 15378B4 and staff's recommended action is that we adopt a resolution determining that the proposed 2021 to 2026 CIP is consistent with the general plan and the uh, coastal land use plan. I'll go ahead and ask for a staff report, please. Good evening, commissioners. I am associate planner, Bonnie O'Connor. Each year, the city council is asked to adopt a five-year capital improvement program or CIP, which comprises the known capital projects on the horizon. The Planning Commission's role in the CIP adoption process is determining if the projects are consistent with the city's general plan and local coastal land use plan. The Planning Commission's role does not extend to project priorities or funding. In the 2021 to 2026 CIP before you this evening, a majority of the projects have been carried over from previous years, which were previously found to be consistent with the general plan and local coastal land use plan. The Planning Commission will need to make this finding for the 20 new projects summarized in the staff report. The staff report includes references from the general plan or local coastal land use plan as appropriate to justify the consistency of the projects. Various staff, including Associate, Associate, Associate Engineer Mar, uh, Ryan Marquez, Deputy Directors of Public Works Sam Bautista and Lewis Sun are available tonight to help answer any questions regarding the projects. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt the attached resolution finding that the 2021 to 2026 CIP is consistent with the general plan and local coastal land use plan. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. O'Connor. <clears throat> I think at this point, I'll ask whether or not uh, any commissioners have um, sort of preliminary questions or clarifying questions uh, before we take public comment and, and move to deliberations. So uh, maybe I'll uh, again ask my colleagues if there are any um, kind of clarifying questions or or things of that nature at this point. Uh, Commissioner Godwin. Yeah, I just had a, 
a couple questions. Um, when you look at the funding for these projects, is it only firm funding that's shown in, in these planning documents or is it firm funding for this year and projected or some kind of mix? How, how does that work just for my education? I guess I'm asking um, Ms. O'Connor. Um, I would I'll ask uh, engineering to help answer that question. Okay. I'm happy to hop in here. Uh, Associate Engineer Ryan Marquez, thanks for the question. So the CIP program is an iterative process. Um, oftentimes we try to gauge what we can fund this year, depending on uh, general fund availability, along with grants and other uh, revenues that the city receives. Um, so uh, a good portion of the projects do show up as unfunded in future years but we try to keep the next fiscal year uh, with projects that we are, are pushing to get funded. Okay. My next question is there seem to be some improvements to fire station 72 and 71, and then there seems sort of a replacement project and there's some couple of upgrade type things. Um, how do those all work together in a single plan? So there, there are some some future needs for for fire replacements that are that are in on the the end of the horizon. But in the meantime, there are a, a decent amount of, of of kind of improvements that need to be taken care of uh, to bring them up to ADA or code for for housing um, women firemen and and improvements like that. So those kind of all work together as there's, there's short-term improvements that need to get done soon. And then just kind of planning on the horizon that eventually uh, one or more of the fire stations will need to be replaced. Okay. And um, some of the funds had, had numerics behind them like Fund 35. Can you ex expand a little bit more about some of that stuff that was kind of cryptic for me? Sure. In the beginning of, uh, of the booklet, it delineates what each of those funds mean, fund one through, through whatever we have in there. Um, I, I can pull up a page number for you if you give me a sec, but they're all delineated in, in the booklet in the beginning. Okay, I'm, I'm looking for that reference so I can follow what you're saying but so it's listed in several places uh packet page 34 is one of the listings with packet um, page fund number fund description and then uh funding figures okay well that's what i i needed to know thank you commissioner godwin are there other questions or uh kind of preliminary comments at, at this point Okay, not seeing any. I think what we might do then is go ahead and see if there's any public comment uh, pertaining to this item. So uh, Mr. Murdoch, I'll ask you to help us with that. Thank you, Chair. At this time, uh, there are no hands raised for public comment. Okay, so we'll go ahead then and bring the matter back to the commission for uh, deliberation. And uh, I'll ask if um, any of the commissioners have um, uh, discussion and, and or uh, also be prepared to entertain a motion if we're at that stage. Uh, recognizing that we may want to kick this around some. I think, um, uh, Commissioner Berman, go ahead. I'm ready to make a motion if uh, there's no other questions or comments. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and invite you to make a motion. All right. I move that the Planning Commission adopts the resolution included in Attachment A, finding that the proposed 2021 to 2026 Capital Improvement Program is consistent with the general plan and the local coastal land use plan. Thank you for that motion. Um, Commissioner Leal. I'll second the motion. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, could we go ahead and get a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Berman. Yes. Commissioner Domerat. Yes. Commissioner Ferguson. Yes. Commissioner Godwin. Yes. 
Commissioner Hauser. Yes. Commissioner Leal. Yes. Commissioner Nibbler. Yes. That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. So we'll move then to the second item under new public hearings. And this is the annual report to city council for calendar years 2019 and uh, 2020. And the recommended sequel action with respect to this matter is not applicable. And the recommended action is that we approve the annual report and discuss the presentation to city council, including identification of a commission representative or representatives. So I'll go ahead and ask for a staff report on this item. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, Honorable Commissioners. I'm Deputy Planning Director Christian Murdoch. Tonight, the Commission is considering its annual report to the City Council, tentatively scheduled for presentation at a study session on June 14th. The Commission is required by City Council resolution to prepare an annual report covering its activities for the prior calendar year. The report being considered this evening will cover two calendar years, 2019 and 2020, to reflect that the Planning Commission did not consider the 2019 annual report in 2020 due to the COVID-19 public health emergency. The annual report relies on the format established in prior years. It includes a summary of Planning Commission membership and an activity report, including the number of meetings held by the Planning Commission and the number of development applications and other items considered at those meetings. It also includes background information about building permit activity processed by the Planning Department, as well as major policy initiatives contained in the City Council's annual priority projects list that involved work by the Planning Commission or Planning Department. Staff received one public comment on this item, which it forwarded to the Planning Commission prior to the meeting and posted on the Planning Commission webpage. The Commission's role this evening is to consider the information contained in the draft annual report attached to the agenda, as well as to identify a Commission representative or representatives to present the annual report to the City Council on June 14th. Staff is available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murdoch. I'll ask at this point whether or not there are any um, sort of commission questions in the nature of clarification or or, or whatnot uh, before we uh, move to um, taking public comments on this matter. Uh, Commissioner Hauser. Thank you, Chair. Um, I uh, I had emailed staff this request as well, and I wanted to bring it up to the to the rest of the commission. I think um, the report is something that's helpful. Um, for us to reflect on as far as seeing, you know, the activities that we've done and, and really getting the summary. Um, one item of information, and I, I don't think staff had enough time because I, I sent the email pretty late, um, but I think one thing that would be really helpful, um, not just for us, but for council and for the community, is to also have an understanding of um, things like how many dwelling units we've approved in a given year, how many commercial square feet, square feet we've approved in a given year. And so, um, you know, being that we have the data, I think I think that would be a nice thing to add. Um, and, you know, we also have the June 7th Planning Commission hearing prior to the, the 14th, um, if that gives staff enough time to kind of have that data and the rest of the commission agrees with that comment. Thank you. I think that's a, I think that's a really um, good idea. Um, just for myself. Uh, any other uh, questions or, or comments uh, preliminarily before we take public comment? Uh, seeing none, maybe we, we could go ahead and uh, see if there's any public comments on this matter, Mr. Murdoch, and, uh, and, then, and then we can bring it back. Uh, there are no hands raised at this time, Chair. Thank you. Okay, so we'll bring, bring the matter back to the commission as a whole. Uh, there not being any sure. public comments. Chair, one hand did go up as you were transitioning back to the commission. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and hear from uh, uh, the, the commenter then. Christine Bowles, please go ahead. Um, good evening. Again, this, this is Christine Bowles. Um, I, I'm the one who sent in the, the letter ahead of time, and um, I just thought I'd read it for um, the public's um, um, benefit. Um, so I believe there's some information missing from the Planning Commission's annual report um, being reviewed tonight. The, the document lists the projects approved by the Planning Commission, but it doesn't list the projects that were subsequently appealed to the City Council or the Coastal Commission or projects that are in litigation. This is important information as it relates to the performance of the planning staff and planning commissioners, especially when projects are appealed for non-compliance with CEQA, Coastal Act, 
general plan or municipal code um, violations. It may indicate that more training is needed in understanding these laws, for example, so as to try to improve the project review process. I know of at least two projects that were appealed to the Coastal Commission and then outright denied. For example, the NorCal Surf Shop, um, where the Coastal Commission determined that um, the proper environmental reviews for red-legged frogs were not followed, and um, the project was denied unanimously. And then uh, 1567 Beach Boulevard, um, which the Coastal Commission had issues with um, the access to the property as the only road um, is um, uh, subject to sea level rise and dependent on the seawall, which is not allowed for new construction. Um, Vistamar is in litigation for general plan and CEQA violations, um, as you probably know. And then the Harmony One has been appealed, as I said earlier, um, uh, including for incorrect analysis of the Hillside Preservation District regulations. Um, these appeals take more staff time and resources too, so it's in everyone's interest, including the council and taxpayers, to ensure that the planning review process is functioning um, properly and, and as best it can. Um, uh, this document also lacks any descriptions of the Planning Commission's actual work on major policy initial initiatives like the general plan update. The LCLUP update is listed as completement, completed when changes are still being made to try to satisfy the Coastal Commission. So I'm, I'm confused about that discrepancy. Um, and then there are asterisks next to these listings, but they're not defined anywhere. So I didn't know how to read those. Um, so I think some clarification would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowles. Are there other comments at this point? I see no other hands raised, Chair. Sure. Thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead then and uh, close up the uh, public comment with respect to this item and bring the uh, matter back to the uh, commission for uh, discussion deliberation. Um, I'll ask my colleagues whether or not anybody uh, uh, wants, to, wants to start. I guess what I would say preliminarily, uh, just to, to my to my colleagues uh, and, and to staff, is that as the chair, I, I'd be, of course, um, prepared to um, attend the meeting and uh, be involved in presentation of the uh, annual report if that were uh, uh, something my colleagues would agree to. Uh, Commissioner Hauser. I, I would really appreciate that. I think, um, Chair, you, you um, when I look at the matrix that staff prepared as to who was here for both years, um, and who's currently serving, I, I think that would be a very apt choice. So I appreciate that you're doing that. Thank you, thank you. It would be uh, nice if uh, we had uh, one or two other commissioners. Um, I know Commissioner Berman, you're uh, serving as the uh, as the vice chair and uh, and well, Commissioner Hauser or anybody else who might have interest, uh, you know, I think it would be uh, appropriate to, to have some other commissioners there. Chair, uh, yeah. I I would certainly be interested to attending, but unfortunately I'm gonna be out of town that weekend. Um, I, I don't feel comfortable with the amount I'd be able to prepare that I'd, I'd hopefully be able to. Um, yeah, I don't, if the, the meeting happens, if this item happens to get pushed, um, I'd hap happily volunteer, uh, but I, unfortunately I can't make the 14th. Commissioner Hauser, I see your hand is still up. I don't know if that's a leftover hand or whether you're uh, I, perhaps willing to volunteer to add. Uh, yeah, so, you know, just as we're talking about it, um, I, I would be um, happy to volunteer to attend um, maybe as the, uh, the liaison for the um, Harmony One uh, challenge. And then I would also be happy to um, attend uh, for this item as well um, with the caveat that I, I think, um, as, again, having the, the broad kind of view of both years that are being presented, I would defer more to you um, and more be your moral support. <laughs> well, I'm going to exercise my prerogative to take you up on both those offers and uh, we'll welcome, uh, welcome having you there. Uh, I, I guess I'd ask if uh, any other commissioners uh, uh, have an, an interest or, or a willingness to, uh, to join. Uh, Commission, uh, Commissioner Damarat. Uh, yeah, as the newbie, I would like to participate. I'll be on the road then also, but at least to be able to listen in to get more familiar with the processes of, of what goes on. So um, 
I would like to join in as a listener and maybe contribute somehow or another. But uh, at this point, it's kind of uh, iffy whether uh, I'm in a place on the road where I'll be able to participate. But my intent would be to try to call in. Understood. Appreciate that. Okay. Well, I, I think for the moment we probably, uh, unless uh, anybody uh, else is uh, interested, in, and frankly, between now and then, if uh, <laughs> if some, should, something should come up, I think we have one other meeting somebody noted, with, at least uh, probably uh, before then. Uh, so I think we can continue to visit this as a, if, if we decide we need to. Uh, it probably makes sense for us to talk a little bit about the substance of the of the report. Uh, I think, as Mr. Murdoch uh, was saying, the the format of the report tracks the formats that have been presented historically, um, and of course, we did hear some public comment as well about uh, uh, some ideas. Um, certainly interested in, in thoughts that people have. Uh, Commissioner Berman. Thank you. Yes, uh, I was exactly going to segue from that. And um, I really appreciate Commissioner Hauser's suggestion. I think that's a great idea. And I guess similarly, if, if we are going to add items to the report, I'm wondering, um, Deputy Planning Director Murdoch, would you be able to speak to the ability of adding, I guess, if any items were um, appealed to City Council or any items that don't historically show up on this report, would it make sense to add those in? Or is there a reason why they're not included? Well, I think you know it's the Commission's report, so it's appropriate to include what information the Commission wants to communicate to the city council about its work. I think whether or not uh, you know, an application is appealed is really beyond the control of the commission and doesn't necessarily reflect the commission's work. Um, and in fact, you know, the vast majority of appeals um, find that the planning commission's action was appropriate and the appeals are denied or denied in part. And so uh, I don't think it's the case that it would paint a necessarily a, an informative picture about deficiencies that need to be addressed um, with respect to the broad you know, topic of appeals and projects that have gone to the city council previously, people can appeal for whatever reason. And again, it's not necessarily reflective of some shortcoming on the part of staff or the planning commission. So that's my uh, opinion as far as tracking and reporting on appeals. Uh, but there were other points raised by the commenter that, that may warrant further discussion as well. And I'm generally in line with that concept. Um, I guess in my eyes, just being a planning commissioner, um, at the point of appeal, granted it is related to what was decided during the planning commission meeting, I feel like that's already understood by the city council because it's kind of in the city council's um, wheelhouse to, to see where it goes from there. Um, but, but I definitely appreciate considering the thought of adding those in. I don't feel it's necessary currently. Thank you, Commissioner Berman. Uh, Commissioner Godwin. Yeah, my comment was since there was so much public interest in the 650 Cape Britain church project, shouldn't we add an item for that into this report for this year as well? Thank you, Commissioner Godwin. Yeah, I would note that we have entertained an awful lot of um, verbal and written um, comment. We haven't actually deliberated or, or considered the matter, but it's certainly, um, I, I see where you're coming from, and it might, you know, might not be a bad thing to note that that's a matter that's certainly been brought to the Planning Commission's um, attention, and it's probably the case that most of us have been doing some thinking about it. Uh, we haven't been violating the Brown Act by discussing it among ourselves, but um, but I don't know. I'd, I'd be interested in what staff thinks about that. I think I would um, simply remark that uh, if we were going to add something like that, I would broaden it to include, you know, perhaps the commission heard X number of speakers about topics that weren't on the agenda rather than focusing on a particular issue. Yeah. I think it, it indicates that the commission's there as a sounding board or an outlet for the community to express items of interest. So I could certainly go back through the minutes, uh, for example, from the meetings in question and and sum up those oral communications uh, by number of speakers, for example. Thank you. I think that recognizing that nothing is um, free, and I recognize that's a fair amount of work, um, we can get some even some rough orders of magnitude, maybe the amount of time that was uh, spent listening to public comment. And maybe that's easier to measure than the number of comments in a, in a particular time frame. Yeah, well, if the commission would leave some discretion to staff to, to indicate some type of uh, 
you know, quantitative factor for that. I'd appreciate it. I think a um, number of speakers, I can jump into the minutes relatively quickly, but uh, measuring the amount of time um, would require a different analytical exercise. I can do either, yeah. but I'd prefer some flexibility. I, absolutely. And, and you know, one thing that I, I thought was along those lines, I thought might be worth um, raising was, that, yeah, I think the, um, one of the things I was ascertaining from Ms. Bull's um, comment, both written comment and of course her presentation of it to the commission tonight is um, some concern about the amount of care uh, that the um, commission takes with respect to matters and the amount of deliberation that the um, commission takes. And uh, I, I think it's fair to note that over the course of the last couple of years, we've had some pretty um, in-depth consideration of, 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 of items and that's really the role of the planning commission. So it's certainly not, I don't state that by way of complaining, it's, it's our function in fact to, um, to, to drill deeply into things. And I, I'm curious about what the data show about you know, the amount of time that we spend on some of these items, uh, particularly items that get appealed. I mean, those, <laughs> it, the truth of the matter is the items that get appealed are the items that uh, many people have come to talk about. And, um, and so uh, I think another indicator of, of the of care and deliberation is the amount of time that's spent in a meeting, in meetings, uh, considering these kinds of matters. I don't know if there's a, any way to quantify that, but it's um, something that occurred to me as I was thinking about the comments. Yeah, please, please allow me to think about that. I mean, <laughs> we could sort of do a, you know, hours per item analysis uh, of the meetings overall, or, you know, number of meetings to reach a decision, but that's, you know, not necessarily indicative of an efficient process. So right. I'm not sure what, what the messages or the story being communicated. Um, so it would be help, it would help to hear a little bit more about that. Well, the other thing is, I'm not sure it's a, the best use of staff time either. I mean, the, the truth is that um, there, there are lots of other things to do, like processing applications and, and whatnot. So um, I don't want this to turn into its own, you know, sort of um, significant analytical, analytical exercise. If we had endless, you know, sort of student interns who could help us with this sort of thing, perhaps that would be a, a, a great use of time, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, Commissioner Godwin. Yeah, something as simple as the number of speakers on a topic might might satisfy everybody. Thank you, Commissioner Godwin. Um, any other comments or, or you know, thoughts or proposals around this? So Chair, I'd like to clarify one point in the public comments and then read back what I've heard to check if that's the consensus of the commission. Please go ahead. Um, so there was a comment uh, made that the um, items with asterisks were not defined. Um, best I can tell looking at the report, they were defined. Um, I think there are two places where asterisks were used under section one for the planning commissioner um, participation uh, during the reporting periods. That's defined with one asterisk Im uh, immediately above section two on packet page 132. And then there are asterisks again in section six, which spans packet pages 133 and 134. Those um, terms with asterisks are defined at the end of that section, just above section seven. So um, I believe the report's complete uh, with respect to the information that's contained in it. Um, however, I heard the commission asking for um, adding dwelling units and commercial square footage approved in the reporting year. And then uh, a sum of speakers for oral communications of items not on the agenda. I think that sounds right. Um, colleagues? Yeah, that, that seems to be the, um, the, the sort of the, uh, the weight of kind of where we wanted to go. And uh, the last question I have is um, if you're comfortable with staff adding that and finalizing the report, or if the commission felt it was appropriate to bring it back to have another look given the nature of the information that's being presented is basically simple quantitative information, but happy to bring it back if that's the will of the commission. Well, my perspective is if it shows something that's um, unexpected <laughs> that you in, in, your, in your sort of assessment of, of, of things that, again, if it shows something that's unexpected, I, it might be good for us to, to know that before as, as a group before it's presented. But um, if it sort of tracks your kind of what we more or less expect then I, I don't know that I would necessarily need to see it again, but uh, Commissioner Berman, your thoughts? I, I don't see, see a need to review what the planning department comes up with. Um, I, I think it all sounds pretty 
um, quality or quantitative rather. And, and um, I trust that the number of units that have been approved is matter of fact, as well as the number of commenters on items outside of the agenda. That also seems like a matter of fact item. So I don't see, see a need to review it again. Thank you, Commissioner Berman. I, I'm fine with that. Uh, any other comments, thoughts? Well, it sounds like that's the commission's guidance then, uh, Commissioner Murdoch, or Mr. Murdoch. Thank you. And uh, thank you, uh, Chair Niblin and Commissioner Hauser and Commissioner Domrat for offering to help uh, with a variety of liaison and reporting assignments. Well, thank you. That will conclude our uh, consideration of um, item two under new public hearings. And then we'll go to um, communications and I'll ask, <clears throat> excuse me, whether or not there are commission communications. Commissioner Hauser. Thank you. Um, you know, I just, I think this is an apt place to say, um, you know, I, we recognize, especially after we review these big projects, we recognize all of the hard work and kind of thorough analysis that staff does. But I want to throw it out here at this meeting again that, um, you know, there's a lot. I know that there are a lot of things that come before staff and that there's a lot of analysis that needs to be done. There are a lot of questions that the commission asks and that the community asks, and we see all of those questions. And so I just, I, I wanna take this opportunity to really say, um, Mr. Murdoch, thank you to you and to staff for all of the work that you do. It does not go unnoticed. Yeah, that's really Thank you well very said. much. Really well said, Ms. Mr. Murdoch and Ms. O'Connor. Well, basically everybody on city staff, I know there's, a, <laughs> I, I don't think we could say it better than that. Commissioner Hauser just said it. Um, any other commission communication? Okay, I will go ahead and ask for staff communication. Then. Nothing to report, Chair, thank you. Thank you. Well, that brings us to the next item on the agenda, which is a motion to adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, Commissioner Berman. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Hauser. I second. Okay, can we get a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Berman. Yes. Commissioner Domerat. Commissioner Ferguson. Yes. Commissioner Godwin. Yes. Commissioner Hauser. Yes. Commissioner Leal. Yes. Commissioner Noblin. Yes. And Commissioner Domerat. Yes. That motion passes unanimously. Great. Well, we're adjourned. Everybody have a good night.